Armando Surungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Surungan, please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. You can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this neurology video, we'll look at the divisions of the nervous system. The nervous system is divided into two parts. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. This is where all information, all signals basically comes to, and where all information and signals basically comes out from, and also where information can be stored. Then you have the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is as important as the central nervous system, because the peripheral nervous system is actually what brings these information, these signals, to the central nervous system and what takes these information, these signals, out from the central nervous system. And so the peripheral nervous system can be divided into two parts. One that brings the information to the central nervous system, and one that takes the information out from the central nervous system. Therefore, the peripheral uh, nervous system consists of a sensory division, or afferent division, and a motor division, or efferent division. It is better to call the divisions of the peripheral nervous system the sensory division and the efferent division, and we'll soon see why. Let's focus at the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system first, that is, the afferent division. The sensory division is for sensing things, such as sight, smell, touch, and even pain, for example. The sensory division basically sends these information to the central nervous system through sensory neurons. So the afferent division of the peripheral nervous system is basically where we have these sensory neurons here, for example. They will bring information to the central nervous system, to the CNS, to the spinal cord as shown. Um, and this is done when a signal comes. It can be signals coming from our eyes, vision, it can be touch signals, it can be pain signals, but these sensory neurons will basically bring this information to the central nervous system, so to the spinal cord for example. This information can then travel up to the brain for processing, for interpretation, for integration and to see if a proper response is needed. The actual response is part of the motor division of the F or the efferent division of the peripheral nervous system. This is where it takes the information, the signal, from the central nervous system, so from the brain or spinal cord, and sends it to a target cell through efferent neurons. The signals being sent from the central nervous system to the target cell can be voluntary, meaning that it can be that it is consciously controlled, or it can be involuntary, which means that it is without our control. An example of an involuntary response is our heart, because we have no control over our heartbeat. It always has to beat. And because there is a voluntary and involuntary uh, efferent neuron, we further divide the efferent division of the peripheral nervous system, so the motor division you can say, but the efferent division of the peripheral nervous system into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is the control of voluntary movements, and the autonomic nervous system is the control of involuntary responses. Let's look at the somatic nervous system first. An obvious example of the somatic nervous system is where information or signals is coming from the central nervous system through these efferent neurons here to target skeletal muscle cells for movement. So skeletal muscle cells are the target cells. And this is part of the somatic nervous system because uh, we can consciously and voluntarily move our arms and legs, right? 
Then we have the autonomic nervous system, which is the control of involuntary responses. To make this a bit more confusing, the autonomic nervous system can be further divided into two divisions, the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. Both the sympathetic and parasympathetic division is what we have no control over because it's involuntary. And both are completely different to each other. For example, the sympathetic division are switched on or are more active during exercises, so during sport. And that is why the sympathetic division is sometimes referred to as the fight or flight response. And the parasympathetic division obviously is less active during exercise, during sport. Now both divisions of the autonomic nervous system, they take information from the central nervous system to a target cell involuntarily. For example, the information here is being sent to the heart's conduction system through efferent neurons. There are two, as you can see. And this is typical of the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic division in particular will actually send, they will take these signals from the central nervous system to the target cell, that is the heart, to cause it to increase in heart rate because we always have an increase in heart rate during activity, during exercise, right? The parasympathetic division, on the other hand, is usually opposite of the sympathetic division. It is called the rest and digest response. And so it will cause a decrease in heart rate or slow the heart rate down. The parasympathetic division is actually more active during rest and when and when we eat, for example. What you have to try to understand is that the sympathetic and the parasympathetic response does not only target the heart, it can target other organs. For example, it can target the gut and the salivary glands, for example, but both have opposite responses to each other. And that concludes the video on the divisions of the nervous system. Just recapping, you have the two main systems, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system, we have the afferent division and the efferent division. The afferent uh, division brings in information to the central nervous system. The efferent division takes information from the central nervous system to a target cell. But when it takes the information to a target cell, it can be a voluntary signal or an involuntary signal. And so we have the somatic and the autonomic nervous system divisions. The autonomic, which is the involuntary response, is divided further into the sympathetic response and the parasympathetic response. Both contradict each other and do opposite things to each other. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.